Hi, I'm Richard. And I'm Sam. And we made Pong. This is our final project. We made, uh, we made a game of Pong from uh, Chip that uh, we, we worked into something that can play against you even. So, have a look. Alright, so here we've uh, got our circuit. Pretty much this chip does most of our work. Um, we've got 7 volts and ground up here and basically just a bunch of inputs to chips. Over here we have a little wire that selects the game. So right now we're set to what they call soccer, what I call foosball, but you can't really see it on the TV anyway. Um, then over here we've got some switches that pick out um, paddle size, ball speed, the angles that it reflects at. And over here we have some of our, our paddle controls. So right now one of them's hooked up to be controlled by LabVIEW. But if you're not using LabVIEW, you basically just use one of these uh, little pots here and change the resistance and it moves your ball up and down. Then uh, over here we have a little speaker. And all of the outputs of the chip go into this, which is an AND gate. And it's pulsing at uh, about 2 megahertz, so we can pick it up on the TV. All these pulses go into an AND gate. All the outputs come out and go into our TV. And now you can see different games, depending on where you are. I think this is like squash, foosball, and now I'm going to turn it over to Sam. Alright, so there were some, some definitely some tricky parts to this circuit. Um, one of the, the trickiest parts was actually that the inputs for the bats were not as simple as they, they first appeared. Um, the, the bats have an RC circuit that is connected into the just like an input for, for the paddle, I guess is what they, they call it. And um, it's not just a, a simple voltage applied to that. In fact, it, because of the RC circuit, it is um, uh, like a 1 minus uh, exponential. So then, you know, you get some kind of peak. Um, but because that pin is grounded every 60th of a second when the refresh rate of the the, the TV screen um, you end up with a funny looking ramp sawtooth sort of wave and um, trying to replicate that was very difficult and so I ended up building another RC circuit and applying a voltage to the input of that um, and controlling that voltage from the computer in order to make the computer able to play against you. Um, now the, the much more difficult part of having the computer play against you was actually determining where the ball is on the screen and moving the paddle to the appropriate position. Um, in order to do that we had to learn a lot about how analog television signals worked. They are very complex. Um, and if you actually have a look right here, you can see they're, they're very high frequency. Um, they've, they've got, you know, e each of these is a different pixel you're looking at. Um, each each uh, horizontal line right there separated. Um, and, and so the, the task was, of course, to to be able to determine where the ball is in all of that mess and then feed it into lab view, uh, which, which ended up being quite a, quite a task. So I'll, I'll give you a quick look here at, at what the lab view code looks like. So on our, on our front panel here, we've got quite a mess. Uh, you can see all of our, our, our video just like on the oscilloscope over there. Uh, but if we, if we look at the uh, the block diagram. You can see that what we do is we we initialize the oscilloscope. Uh, we take an average just to to clean up the signal a little bit, and then we take some some information about the waveform coming in, um, and 
we, we feed that into an array which we average a few times. You know, we, we can average, like, say, the last two or the last three, the last n number of, of elements in the array. And then we feed that number into an equation which is based on what the, uh, the max voltage of the system is and a few other things. Um, which then goes ahead and controls the voltage applied to the input of the RC circuit. So, in our LabVIEW program, um, it's a, it gets to be pretty complicated, but essentially what we do is we initialize the oscilloscope to, to look specifically for a TV signal, and then we, we uh, take that signal and import that into LabVIEW, and we analyze where the uh, where the peaks are and the minimum and we can find the difference between them and because of the way that the video sh signal is shaped that serves as an approximate uh, way of measuring how far the um, the ball, the, the bright pixels are from where uh, where the edge of the screen is and by taking some some averaging we're able to to get an approximate idea of that um, the video signal is, you know, almost inherently really pretty, pretty jumpy, and so, especially considering how fast it is, it uh, it is difficult to to get a, a hold of any sort of pulse that we're looking for. Right, that's quite noisy. Definitely. Um, so we take that that voltage that we 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 take the um, the result, the average and we feed it into an equation that then gives us a, a value for a voltage which um, is calibrated to the system that, that will give us, you know, it'll move the, the voltage into the right spot for the RC circuit that I talked about um, in order to make it uh, move the, the, the paddle into the right spot. So just a, uh, a little before and after learning, I think we definitely had to, uh, to bone up a little bit on, first of all, our, our RC circuits just to, to get back in speed on that, but also we had to do a fair amount of learning about uh, NTSC video signals. Um, they're, they're quite messy, uh, at least from a you know, signal processing standpoint. They're, you know, they're well understood, but that doesn't make them any easier to work with in LabVIEW. Um, what should I do? That might have been it. This is the computer playing against me right here. I'm on the right, uh, so we're, we're all tied up here. And and you'll see that the computer is, um, in a lot of ways, somewhat unpredictable. And so, uh, you know, it, it's not perfect by any means, but it does provide a, a fair impediment. Uh, look at, at where the ball is and move the paddle roughly uh, where it should be for that. And I think that that's really what we were trying to accomplish here. All right, now, to have a, have a look at two uh, real humans playing a game, let's, let's start a new game here between, between Richard and myself. Might want might to have to turn up the heat here a little bit, turn up the, the speed of this game. Get the little tiny paddles on. Oh man, this is this is rough. So as per uh, one of the requirements, we had to collect some XY data, and we we have LabVIEW just doing just that, and um, so we just collect some data, put it into our spreadsheet, and plot it. Uh, still not really sure exactly what this data is. A little bit sad, but it looks like that x-axis might be um, the voltage going through one of our paddles, since we know that that goes up to about 3.5, and we've been keeping it around 2.5 to, 2 to 3. And um, I suspect maybe that y position is a uh, position of the paddle. So that's our, our data. So, so as a brief conclusion here, I, I think that our, our game of Pong works great for, for two players. Um, in the, in the one-player computer versus mode, uh, it does break down a little bit. It certainly, it, yeah, it certainly is uh, it's the right idea, but 
But getting perfect computer controlling and, and winning every time uh, did not work out the way that we had expected it to. Um, I think that LabVIEW has a few problems that um, it, it was working a lot slower than we expected, so it was sampling at a rate that was, you know, the Hard ball the ball is moving across the screen this fast and it's sampling here or here or something like that or two and or you know it's, now it's behind things like that, um, and so I think it made it really pretty difficult to, to even really determine what was happening in some cases. Um, but yeah, I, I was I was really happy with uh, with the game overall. I think it it worked out great. And and it's great for picking up ladies too. Maybe not.